All right, so looks like we've got uh, quite a few others joining us, so we'll get started. Uh, we are planning to record this event, so we'll make that available to folks afterwards. Um, so I'm Sherry Jones, one of the vice principals here, and I'll be looking after the grade nines next year. So the current grade eights. So I just wanted to welcome you here. We're really happy you could join us tonight. There is a Q&A where you can enter any questions you have and we will address any questions we haven't answered at the end of our presentation. We have several presenters tonight and we'll um, have a, a slideshow to show you, share with you as well. Um, Frontenac's a great school. We hope you learn uh, some information tonight that might be helpful for you. And I'd like to introduce our next presenter, Mr. Bonham Carter. So thank you, Ms. Jones. I, uh, it's uh, my great privilege and opportunity to be the principal at Frontenac Secondary School, and I'd like to welcome all of our families here tonight for this information session. Um, my history at Frontenac goes all the way back to 1994, when my first job as a teacher, I was given a job here, and I was uh, so excited to have my first teaching job here. And, um, you know, I, I got a number, I had a number of years uh, here as a teacher, and then I, I became a vice principal and and uh, was had the opportunity to move around the district to a number of different schools. But my heart was always here at Frontenac. So when I got the chance to come back as a vice principal, you can imagine how happy I was. Well, this, the same uh, story applies to, to uh, my time as a principal. And I, I spent a couple of years somewhere else, but I was given the opportunity to come home uh, to Frontenac and be the principal. So um, I'd like to welcome you to the Frontenac family. Uh, it's an exciting time uh, for everybody as our, our, our children transition uh, into the sort of first stage of adulthood. And um, I know I know it's an exciting time because I've got a son that's also in grade eight um, at another school and he's making that transition. Um, Frontenac's one of the largest secondary schools in the district. And um, every year we boast uh, a class uh, in excess of 250 students. And that provides an opportunity for us to, to create programming and extracurricular activities that are that are really second to none. Now, that being said, and I'm a little bit biased about Frontenac because it is a great school, uh, there are many good high schools in Kingston. And one of the main messages I want you to hear tonight is that we really want you to make the best choice for your son or daughter. And I know some of you are here to, to hear, you know, about Frontenac and make a decision. Uh, but, but more than anything, I, I want you to think about um, uh, what's best for you. And just know that whatever you decide, we'll, we will support you on that journey. Um, I would say that um, often when I give this uh, this talk at the beginning of uh, the transition from grade eight to grade nine, uh, lots of students have worries about about what high school is going to mean. You know, there's there's sort of the stereotypical things that uh, that happen in high schools if you watch the movies, um, and the reality is most of those things aren't true. And so the things that wor people worry about just don't exist. And in fact, there are so many wonderful things about coming to high school that you haven't, that you, that you have no idea about, like like meeting a new best friend. There's somebody waiting here for you at Frontenac that uh, you haven't met yet Be because the class is so big and you're you're coming from a smaller place. Um, there's just opportunities to meet to meet lots of new people and try new things, and that's one of the things that we boast here at the school is that we try to create lots of opportunities for students to try things they haven't done before and uh, and just uh, try to create that really positive experience. Our school motto is striving to be our best. Um, you know, we we're, we're not perfect, uh, but I always I always like to say that, um, you know, all the things in, in high schools that are a challenge, there's there's a few there's fewer of them here and all the great things of high school. Um, uh, we've got lots of them. Uh, so um, I think uh, my main message for you today is that uh, the transition to high school is going to be great. I want you to get excited about it and you're going to hear from lots of folks tonight about what Frontenac has to offer. Um, I want uh, the students that are listening tonight, the grade eight students, to think about uh, this step and um, the opportunities. You'll be given more independence and more freedom and you'll be given some more responsibility in terms of making choices for yourself. So that's all part of uh, the transition to high school and we're excited to help you with that as well. We have a tremendously dedicated staff at Frontenac and um, you're going to meet a few of them tonight, but I just I want you to know that it's a small sample of the excellent staff that we have here. And uh, it's part of the Frontenac tradition uh, for there's just mutual respect between the staff and the students and it's it sort of permeates throughout everything that we do. 
Um, so uh, please reach out if you have any questions. Um, and uh, we'll, we're going to try to make this transition to high school a great one for you. And um, here's looking forward to uh, a more normal year next year uh, at Frontenac and um, an exciting start for the graduating class of 2026. I got the math right there. So I'm gonna turn things over to Mr. Leggett, who's our brand new vice principal. Uh, he's just gonna say a few words and then hand things off to Mr. Lalonde, who's our head of guidance. Thanks again for taking the time to come tonight and we look forward to meeting you down the road. Hello, uh, yeah, I'm Mr. Leggett and uh, this is uh, day one on the job for me. Very new to the, uh, the vice principal role here, but uh, I have uh, been at Frontenac for uh, most of the last decade and uh, so know a lot about the school and this is the the start of a journey for uh, for you and your uh, your kids and it is an amazing journey because uh, we we watch kids and we help them grow and uh, it's uh, it's amazing the changes that take place in the kids as they grow from uh, a grade nine an incoming grade nine student that's uh, a little bit uh, often timid walking through the front doors um, and uh, trying to find their first class to uh, when they they walk out of uh, or walk across the stage when we're allowed to have uh, graduation ceremonies in four years and uh, and moving on to bigger and better things beyond uh, this building and it's just amazing to see the growth in the kids over that time and so that's uh, you know something that you will you'll experience from uh, a different view than what we get but uh, it is uh, a, a wonderful experience nonetheless so um, to move things along here just so that uh, we're not taking up too much of your time before we get into the kind of the business of the uh, evening uh, I'd like to introduce uh, our head of student services who will uh, take you through a lot of the details of uh, this transition and uh, that is Mr. Danny Lalonde. Good evening everyone. Um, I am um, happy to be here tonight. I'm just getting some slides ready here. Um, you should be able to see um, the school. Um, I'm going to run through some technical information with you about what what high school is like, about uh, credits and how credits are, are uh, what credits you need to graduate and that sort of thing. I'll talk a little bit about course selection and uh, and then the variety of things that are available for high school students as we go along. Um, Front next serves students from a broad community. I think uh, uh, Mr. Bonham Carter talked about that. Um, and um, there'll be time at the end, I guess, for, for questions. Our daily schedule. We're planning on being semestered in the fall and after a year of Octo Monsters and Quad Monsters, um, it's been an interesting few years, so we're looking back forward to being back to semesters. Students can expect to work on, so in an Octomester, they were working in a course, at a, a course a month, basically. Uh, now we're doing a course every 10 weeks, a couple courses every 10 weeks. Uh, in the fall, they'll be doing four classes in a semester. Uh, we try to build timetables with two core courses and uh, balance that, uh, the challenging courses with some exploratory programs like a, a woodshop or an art class. That means students might have math and English with their phys ed and their music or geography and science with another elective in their French class. And uh, I'll say now that if you, if you end up getting a timetable in the fall that uh, doesn't look balanced, uh, don't be afraid to come and ask us to to work on it and see if we can make it uh, fit better for you. Our school day starts at 8.15. Uh, we end our school day at 2.30 uh, with about an hour for lunch. Uh, we're hoping to have our cafeteria open in the fall. Students have been eating lunches in their classroom during the pandemic. Pre-pandemic, students eat in the cafeteria, they eat in the halls. Um, they sometimes go out to the many restaurants in our in our neighborhood that, uh, that uh, like to feed them good food. <laughs> Um, the current model, so one of the things that will be different in the fall for our incoming grade nines is that their program is largely de-streamed. Now what that means, I have to talk about streaming first to make sure you understand de-streaming. In a streamed program, we had academic courses, applied courses. Um, when, when we were younger, it would have been basic, advanced, general. Uh, different terminology. Um, the advanced and academic um, 
often prepared students to either go to college, to university, that sort of thing. Um, some research and uh, uh, lots of trial and error have shown that it's better not to stream as early as grade nine, and so that's why the, the government has moved to a, a D-Stream program. Now, they're still rolling out curriculum. So in the fall, uh, there's a curriculum for math and science that has a, a code that uh, is de-streamed, but all the kids will be in the same level courses uh, in, in, the, in the areas that you see here in English, math, geography, science, and French. Those previously were streamed or they're now de-streamed, and then phys ed. And those are the courses that students need in grade nine for the diploma. And then there's a number of electives. Electives are a little bit fluid in that um, you, there are, th there are ones we recommend for grade nine. Uh, we recommend students take a technology or a business uh, and they should take an art credit. Um, but we, this G3 and G2 and G1 refer to uh, something I'll show you a little bit later, the diploma requirements. D diploma requirements have a number of Englishes you have to take and that sort of thing, but there's also a group one, group two, group three, and we try to get those out of the way early in the early in a, a, their education. So they'll do, a, a, if they take the woodshop, the technology course, um, they'll get their group three covered off. If they do a business credit, they'll get their group two covered off. And by doing their art credits, they, they'd have a compulsory art credit. Um, and we've also introduced in the fall, there'll be a, a course called Introduction to Family Studies. And that's new for this year. So uh, I know there's some excitement at the elementary schools about oh, we get to do some family studies. So diploma requirements, I'll cover those off as uh, quickly. I'd invite you to go visit our uh, the school website and under the uh, student tab, there's a, there's a heading called course calendar. And the course calendar is the booklet we put together that has all of the courses that we offer and all the diploma requirements, and lots of other great information in there. So a lot of what I'm talking about tonight, I'm, I'm summarizing some of the things in the book. So if you want more information, go, go to that booklet. Uh, thir students get, need 30 credits. And so that's eight every year. Eight every year adds up to 32. So uh, in 11 or 12, sometimes students will take a spare. Uh, but they need 18 to graduate. Uh, they need 30 to graduate. 18 are compulsory. 12 are electives. I'll show you what those are on the next slide. Students will also complete the uh, Ontario Literacy Test. They do that in grade 10. Um, and then there's opportunities if, they, if they're not successful, they can do it again in grade 11. And then there's a course offered for, for students who really struggle with the test. There's a course offered to make sure that that, uh, that helps, that, that gets uh, covered off. Students also need 40 hours of community service. Um, in the last couple of years, that's been really dicey. And they've one year they had, they've waived the requirement. This year, our graduates will need 20 hours. And that can include a, a number of uh, creative, uh, creative solutions to not being able to go out into the community. Uh, the important thing for our grade nines coming in is that they can start counting their community service hours in July and August before they start grade nine. Um, again, it might be a little difficult in the, in the, at the moment to go to the food bank or a, a soup kitchen to do the traditional kind of uh, community service that, that we do, um, but helping out in any way in your community is, is still really valuable. So if they're cutting grass in the summer for neighbors or or doing yard work for uh, for elderly relatives, then that can all count as their community service. Here's the diploma requirements. And so I've laid it out on this slide where students will take English every year uh, and they need four Englishes to, uh, to graduate. They'll take math in nine, 10 and 11. Uh, the diploma requirements have two sciences, a French, a geography, a phys ed that students can take in nine or 10. That's why I said it was fluid. So if you wanted to take band and visual arts in grade nine, you could. We, we recommend taking the phys ed in one of the arts. Um, if you don't get band in grade nine, but you want to take band, you can jump in in grade 10 and, and take a band class. That's true of some of the other electives as well. In grade 10, students will take a history class. They'll also take a, a, their twin classes, civics and careers. They're each worth half a credit uh, and they're offered together as career civics in grade 10 and then students need an art credit to graduate as well. Here's where I was talking about before the groups. There's a group one, two, or three, and they include what it says there, English language, an English course, an extra an extra English course besides these four over here, a, an extra language course like a grade 10 Spanish or a grade 10 French, 
uh, an additional social science besides the geography and history. And for group two, it's a phys ed, a business uh, credit, an extra art credit. Um, and then in group three, it's an extra science, an upper year science class, a technology class. Uh, and in all three, you could do a co-op that's related to some of those subject areas. You'll notice over here that math runs out in grade 11. That doesn't mean they don't need a grade 12 math. It just means to graduate, to get your diploma, you only need math in 9, 10, or 11. Um, with some, and the same in science. You don't need a grade 11 science to graduate, but if you wanted to do something like go to vet tech at St. Lawrence College or do a degree at, at university in the sciences, you'll be taking upper level sciences and upper level math. So we work that out a little bit later as we go along with students uh, and explain, um, you know, help them make the course selections later as they go along. But to begin with, um, it's fairly simple. I'm very proud of our student services department, and I, I, I just want to brag about them a little bit. We'll start by reintroducing you to our administrators who you all met. Um, and then I'm going to move to this slide. So student services is um, guidance counselors, uh, student success leads, um, LPS teachers, um, school to community uh, programs, and our adolescent care worker. We also work very closely with some out, uh, out of school resources. We have a social worker who works once a week at our school. She's, uh, uh, she works for the school board and, and, and works with various schools. Uh, we work with Keys, the employment services in town. Uh, we work with St. Lawrence College um, employment services. We work with Kairos uh, for counseling. We work with Maltby for counseling. And there's a number of other agencies who we are connected with who who help make sure that our students are safe and feel good about, about how their life goes. You'll want to know that in the fall, in September and October, we try to meet one-on-one -on -one with every one of our grade nines just to say, hey, I'm a guidance counselor. Here's the support services that are available for you. And, and try, to try to let them know that uh, there's a team behind them to help them move forward and, and to be successful. Um, I should note that our um, student success is, is the area where we help students to be successful. When you and I were younger, uh, you might pass or fail a class. We work very hard to make sure that at least in grade nine and 10, that students don't fail classes. And so you might see in a report card, uh, a mark below 50. Those are usually codes. So we have 25 or 35 or an I. When a student gets an I, um, they might be, they'll be referred to student success. And all that that means is that the student missed something. There was a component of the of the course that that didn't get completed. And uh, life is busy, and there's a variety of reasons that they might miss a component. Uh, maybe they missed a test because they uh, they had some family event that they had to be at, or um, some illness in the family. And with COVID, it's happening a lot. And our student service, student success department is is quite busy helping students to be successful. And and I'll add to that that. Just because you had an I doesn't mean you're going to student success just to get a passing mark. Overall, the student may be getting a 70 or an 80, but if they missed some some expectations, some key expectations from the course, they would they would get some support from student services to find that to finish that. So that's that's maybe a difference from what you remember from high school, uh, from your own high school experience. And I want to do introduce you to a couple of. Um, this is Jen McCluskey. She, she's our LPS lead. And Diane Oak, she's on on uh, online tonight with us, and uh, she's our um, lead success teacher for student success. Uh, the Learning Commons is another uh, great place. Uh, when you and I were kids, we spent a lot of time reading books, and uh, we we have a, a a bigger facility now that has. I think there's another slide here with, yeah. So uh, we 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 still have books. But there's lots of tables, lots of laptops. Uh, we have uh, several hundred Chromebooks, which is uh, sort of a reduced um, laptop that students use in class and uh, in the in the resource area to uh, to work on assignments. Becoming a Falcon. So <clears throat> there's lots of opportunities at uh, at uh, Frontenac to to do a number of to get involved to be part of the school. Um, this is a little bit out of order, but so one of the things you do, your first step is to is to pick courses. 
Um, all of our feeder schools, students have automatically been transferred to us. And so they should be able to go to my blueprint. I'm going to slide this slide over here and uh, this screen over here. You can see so in my blueprint. Um, so when students log into their their school. Uh, login at elementary school, they have the same login. There's this ribbon of apps. My blueprint is one of those apps and students will go here. Not there. That's mine. Students will open up their their. Uh, student place and under high school they see their high school planner and here you get to choose courses and so you go in and like i said everybody's in the same english so you just pick english and you add that and when it comes down so you you'll you'll go through and click off of all of those and then here's where you can pick instrumental music visual arts band uh, there's french immersion band for our immersion students um, and then any one of the other electives that are available to students uh, and you do that in, in my blueprint. Back to our slides. They're picking their courses at their elementary schools right now. They can pick them at home with you using their login from school. And if you run into any, any trouble, we're happy to help. So um, if you if you need some support, uh, we can do that with you. So if your teacher at the elementary school can't help, contact our student services here. We typically finish building timetables uh, late in the spring and try to get them out to the elementary schools early. Um, and I'm not sure how that'll go this year, but uh, but that's our goal. And so you'll be able to know before you go off for for summer what uh, what your courses are going to be. Um, orientation. So late in the summer in August, right before school starts, we have all the students in. They pick their locker, or they get their timetable on any textbooks that they need. That was pre COVID. I'm hoping that happens this fall. We'll see what happens. And then in September, uh, we also have a day outside, which is what these pictures are of. We have a day outside where where students get to meet some senior students, um, get to uh, get to know each other a little bit better and and do some team sport activities together. And that's that's always a lot of fun. I'm going to go through some of the extracurriculars that we have in the school. Uh, there's something for everyone. We have a, a, a wonderful arts department. Um, there's me. And this is the play we did right before COVID hit. We did a play called Noises Off, uh, a complex, uh, hilarious um, play. We have an improv team. We have uh, band nights, coffee houses. Um, our, our music teacher likes to get students together. I'm looking out my window at the courtyard. Our, our music teacher likes to get uh, students together with guitars and uh, and have music time at lunch in the courtyard when the weather is good. Athletics. Now I think we're welcoming on Mr. Um, I don't know if actually is, so is Duncan is Mr. Cowan here? Yeah, can you hear me, Dan? Yeah, I can. I think Sherry's going to give you see control. Me? Uh, I can see you. So Sherry's going to give you control okay, so perfect. you can talk about athletics. OK, thanks. Can can you guys hear me still? All right, thanks. Uh, thank you, folks, for uh, hearing me. I think you're good now, Duncan. OK, thank you. Um, so I, I came on a few minutes late because I was coming home from practice, which seems appropriate for the talk that I'm that I've got to uh, to give you guys tonight. Um, thank you to everyone who's uh, chiming in tonight. Um, I think probably, uh, you know, we talk a lot about the extracurricular part of, of high school and, and I know Danny entered into that conversation and, um, you know, a, a pretty important former teacher mentor of mine, he always referred to extracurriculars as co-curriculars. Um, and the reason he did that was that he, he never really considered an extra. He always preached that it was just part of the educational process, part of the high school experience. And um, I think that's a really important message is that, you know, despite classes running from 8.15 in the morning till 2.30 at the end of the day, it really is what you engage in or what your son or daughter engage in after school that can really enhance the experience. And that does not have to be just athletics. It can be a combination of arts and athletics in different clubs. And there is a huge, huge selection out there for them when they get to get to high school. Um, for me, obviously, as the athletic director at Frontenac, it's, it's uh, more my role to talk about athletics. And uh, I, certainly we have a really proud tradition of athletics at Frontenac. And uh, 
you know, I think a lot of people sort of um, by reputation know that we were pretty successful and we, we definitely do care about winning. That's an important part of our DNA. Um, but I think, you know, the, the real importance is that it's, it's more, more than uh, winning. It's more about pushing sort of our student athletes to achieve success and, uh, and push their boundaries and, uh, learn new things, um, by putting them sometimes in uncomfortable places, but that's where we learn a lot. So I think we take a lot of pride in that. We have a, a really dedicated experienced coaching staff, um, who place a high value on sort of their roles after school hours and, uh, and coaching students and offering those, those opportunities. Um, you know, there's, there's a ton of sports. Um, they're pretty much the same at most schools. Um, a lot of that stuff, if you have specific questions about certain sports or seasons or when they run, um, you can email me um, at any time and, and I'll, uh, I'll get back to you as promptly as I can. Um, but uh, certainly um, if I can offer just, you know, a key piece of advice if you pass along um, to your son or daughter before high school is that hopefully they have the courage to come out and just try something. Um, and I think we see a ton of athletes who have never played a sport who show up and they might get cut from one team or cut from another, but then they seem to find something that's for them and a group that's for them. And they end up having this great experience with new peers and, uh, and new opportunities. And, and that's, that's one of the best things to see certainly as, as a teacher and as a coach. So, um, you know, we're really excited for, we, every year we're really excited for a new group coming in and uh, we're always excited to try and continue our, um, our athletic tradition here as part of Frontenac and uh, look forward to having lots of new faces next year. Thank you very much. Do I have control again, Sherry? You do. Okay, welcome back to me. <laughs> um, so uh, there are a number of clubs in the school. And so if you're not athletic or artsy, you might uh, you might like uh, some of the clubs we have. They include a, a math club, a business club, a robotics club. We have a yarn club that started this year, a tech crew that does lights and sound for events, an arts club, a mountain bike club. Uh, we have jazz band, um, ultimate frisbee, a ski club, a guitar club, something called the Ophelia Club for girls. And we have a library reading club and, and a number of other clubs that uh, sort of spring up at the interest of students and staff. So there's always lots and lots to do. There's lots of leadership opportunities as well, working on student council and in other, in other places around the school. We are global citizens. Uh, we do annual fundraisers for, for United Way and on other, other local uh, causes. Um, there's some pictures here of, of people uh, doing some, some global stuff. We're actively involved in truth and reconciliation. Um, uh, it's Black History Month and we have displays already outside uh, the front office. We're active in fighting racism and discrimination of all kinds and active in providing safe places uh, and support for all our students. That's the end of that. And so um, before I introduce uh, Mr. Stephen and uh, Madame Miles, who are going to talk about math and French immersion, uh, Mr. Finn is going to talk about our e AP program as well. Uh, I think we'll field a couple of questions right now. So. We had a document here um, with some questions. Um, please explain how course selection requirements change if students are in FI in, oh, so in, if they're in French, um, the course selections, so that's, I'll go back to my blueprint. Give me a second. I'll uh, I have to open a window. Uh, so I open that English window and you can see English. Let me just do that here while I can and I'll share that with you. Uh, I've got to log into my blueprint. Give me just a second. No, nope, I'm going to do a different thing here. I will show you. I'll answer that question. It's, uh, it's a good one. So I'll share my screen over here. I'm going to log in and I'll take us to student view. And so in the high school planner, I hope this answers the question. In English, you only have English, you couldn't have French, but in math, when you go to math, you'll see there's an immersion extended and an AP um, option, and, and you would choose the one that, uh, that applies to you. Um, and Madame Miles will talk more about the, uh, the, the 
French certificates that are available. Uh, if uh, students already chosen the courses and that now realize that they can take a different course, uh, how do they go about doing that? Uh, send me an email with the course that you'd like to change and I will be glad to make that switch for you. I think there's a slide at the end that uh, shows my email address, but it's my last name, first initial. Um, I'll make sure it's on a slide before we finish um, so you, you know how to get a hold of me. And if you can't get a hold of me, just email the school and say, please send this to Mr. Lalonde and, and we'll get you on there. And I don't see, are there any other questions, Diana? That's it for now, Danny. Just a few questions. OK, perfect. Um, and so now we're going to go. I'm going to turn that off and we're going to go to a different slide. And I'm going to introduce you to Mr. Stephen, who's going to talk about our math program. Oh, you can hear me now. Yeah, excellent. All right, uh, so as Mr. Lawn said, I'm uh, Jeff Stephen and I'm uh, the department head for business, math and computer studies. And so under that umbrella, there's a variety of courses. And as uh, we talked about a bit earlier, there's some compulsory and some elective within there. As you saw on just that uh, last screen that uh, Mr. Lawn was showing, there are those different options in grade nine math. There is the new de-streamed curriculum, but within that you saw there were those multiple options as well. If you are interested in immersion or extended uh, French as well, there would be that option, which I'm sure Madame uh, Miles will talk about as well, and also the enriched with uh, which Mr. Finn will uh, go into more depth in later. You'll notice as well that would be a compulsory course in grade nine, taking the mathematics, but there's also the electives you can take in the areas of business or computer studies. And for the grade nine option next year, it's a, it's a bit of a chatty title. It's called Information and Technology in Business. But the way we look at it is it's basically a software sampler course. So we'll design websites, we'll do a bit of audio editing, we'll do a bit of video editing, a bit of spreadsheets, a bit of presentation software. Our goal is really just to introduce uh, students to a variety of platforms and things that they can use if they choose to go on in business or probably more importantly that they can use in the rest of high school or in the rest of their lives in, in other capacities. And then if they're really specifically interested in computers, then they could maybe go into computer science and more of the programming end of things in grade 10, perhaps communications technology and doing more video production or uh, those sorts of uh, uh, explorations or the grade 10 introduction to business where it's again that sort of sampler idea where there's a bit of accounting, a bit of marketing and a bit of human resources or leadership, lots of uh, options available. And uh, it's a lot of fun for us to teach and uh, hopefully a lot of fun and a lot of valuable information for the students as well. But the courses again, as, as you've heard the, the theme this evening, the courses are part of it, but it's really the, the culture that's equally important. And uh, at Frontenac, uh, it's, it's pretty renowned for the Monday night math tutorials where students can come in on Monday nights uh, in the, the non-COVID eras to get uh, assistance from math teachers, to collaborate with their peers, uh, to work together again, knowing that it's 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 good to ask for help and to practice and keep, uh, as the saying goes, uh, the Latin ad optima nita more, to keep striving for our best and continuously improve. And also um, there's the opportunity to participate in some University of Waterloo math contests as well. Uh, there's the math leads uh, for math competitions, if that's uh, an area of interest. And in business, we'll participate in a lot of stock market challenges or in computer engineering, some robocode uh, competitions. So really, uh, as you've heard many times uh, tonight and we'll probably hear again, there really is something for everyone. And I, I do hope you'll take some time to, to think about these options for next year. Thank you, Jeff. Now I'm going to hold this slide here a minute. I'm not sure that we're able to see Jeff in the slide at the same time, but he was talking about the stream to, to business. Um, computers and math. Again, if you if you look at our uh, course calendar that's online, uh, there's some nice flow charts in that in that booklet that uh, show you some of the opportunities for math students. Uh, we'll go now to Mr. Finn, who's going to tell us about our AP program. Maybe we can keep the slide up at the same time, but it's uh, not sure we can. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, thank you all for uh, attending tonight. Um, I, uh, I'm Mr. Finn, uh, Eric Finn, um, the head of science here at, at Frontenac now, and uh, I'm going to give you a little uh, rundown on our advanced placement uh, enrichment opportunity program. Um, I just want to 
mentioned that like Mr. Bonham Carter, my roots at Frontenac are, are quite, uh, there's quite a long period of time there. I was a grade nine student in 1989 at, at Frontenac. Um, and uh, one of the neat things about Frontenac is we have a lot of members of our faculty that were, that attended Frontenac and, and our alumni. So it's a, it's a neat, uh, a neat place to be when, when that occurs. Um, I also have two daughters that attend the school and, and absolutely love every second of, of being here. So as a parent, uh, I put a, a, a great plug in for the, the school as well. Um, so at Frontenac, we have lots of different enrichment opportunities. I'm, I'm going to chat with you about a specific one. Um, and it's uh, it, it, the enrichment opportunity that we have in, in math and science is uh, we do offer AP courses and AP stands for advanced placement. Um, we've offered uh, AP calculus at the, the grade 12 level for a number of years. And uh, starting next year, we're going to offer AP physics as well. Um, both the courses uh, give students an opportunity to, while they're in grade 12, to study um, at the university level in, in calculus and physics. And uh, both give them, uh, both are, are immense benefit to them because if they do head off and, and take those subjects at university, um, they're going to be really well prepared, um, uh, you know, at crunch time in, in first year university when that becomes a really stressful situation for them. So students will learn calculus and physics in grade 12 at the university level. Um, their assessments, uh, their tests and exams will still continue to be at the grade 12 level um, because the credit that they're being granted is the same credit that other students would take in calculus and physics. Um, in May, students have the opportunity to write. Uh, there's an international exam um, in, in, all, in all these subject areas and students have the opportunity to write uh, any number of the AP exams, um, calculus, physics, English. Um, they can pick and choose which one they, they want to write. Um, if they do get a, a certain level on the exam, they can use it when they apply to university and look at um, getting exempted. Some universities, every university has a different policy how they handle AP classes. But there is an opportunity to, to you know, get exempted or, or get credit for um, a particular course if they score well enough in, in, uh, in high school. Um, and those exams happen in the first two weeks of May uh, every year. And we have a bunch of students uh, writing both the English um, AP exams and the calculus AP exam uh, this, this May. Um, to do AP, uh, to, to be involved in our AP program, um, really all you need to do in grade nine from a math science, uh, you know, stream is just choose the AP um, grade nine course. Students will just take uh, sort of an AP math section in grade nine and again in grade 10. Um, and then things uh, ramp up a little bit in grade 11 where they'll take two math courses in grade 11. They'll take the grade 11 math course first semester and then they'll take the grade 12 functions course second semester um, and that allows them to reach ahead so that they can do calculus uh, in first semester of grade 12 and then physics in second semester of, of grade 12. So if you're considering the you know the enrichment program there in math and science uh, you just have to make a decision in course selections to choose that AP stream and Mr. Lalonde showed you when you click on the drop down menu in math it's one of the it's one of the options there. Um, if you have any questions about the AP program at Frontenac, um, you, you know, please reach out. Uh, my email is Finn E. Uh, my name is Eric Finn. It's, or you can email the school and they'll forward the email to me and I, I'd be happy to answer any of your, your questions. And if you have questions about the English AP, we can put you in touch with uh, the, the members of our, our staff that are, that are involved with the English courses. So thanks for coming tonight and uh, and uh, listen to a little bit about our enrichment opportunity. Thanks, Eric. Appreciate that a lot. Um, the one thing I, I I missed something in the course selection that I just want to say now. Um, one of the things that DStreamed didn't get rid of is our locally developed program. So for students who uh, struggle academically and struggle with their schoolwork, there are still locally developed programs available. And local develop is the term we use for uh, courses that have been modified to help students who uh, need some catch up. If they're working below grade in grade eight, if they're working below grade level in grade eight, they'll want to look at uh, locally developed courses for grade nine. 
At this time, what you do in my blueprint is just pick the same courses that all our students are picking and let your elementary teacher know and we will we will talk to them anyway. Um, but we'll we'll be reaching out to your family to make sure that the timetable we build for your student who needs locally de developed programming um, gets the best timetable possible. That's that's what we're hoping for. That was the uh, the um, the initiative there by uh, the, the group of guidance counselors in the city was to to make course selection as simple as possible for everyone and cater to and help the students who need it most. So um, is uh, I think that we didn't get uh, Miss Miles online. Is that right? I don't see her, Mr. Lalonde. OK, so I will cover off some of the French immersion stuff. Um, French Extended, our, our late immersion students, uh, ex immersion students uh, have been doing immersion since uh, early, early grades. There's two certificates we uh, we prepare students for. One is the extended certificate. One is the immersion certificate. For the extended certificate, they need seven courses. For the immersion, it's 10 courses. That includes four Frenches. So you, you need French in 9, 10, 11, 12 on both sides of that, that uh, on both sides. And then uh, in grade 9 and 10, if they did all of their, we offer mathématiques, uh, géographie, carrière, civilité, and musique, éducation physique, uh, if they can, they can get their 10 credits pretty easily in, in uh, grade 9 and 10. And that's the same with the extended uh, students. So when you're picking your courses, make sure you pick the French or extended elective, uh, levels of those of those programs. Um, I think. I think that's all I need to say about that. She might have also talked about the international language certificate. Mr. Stephen, you want to add to that? Yes, uh, and just uh, to confirm you too. as well with the uh, the mathematics. If you're thinking of the AP calculus down the road for math, you could still take the French math mathematics in grade 9, 10 and even 11 and still be on pace to get the uh, the AP calculus down the road. It'd be in the grade 12 where you have to also take the grade 12 enriched in grade 11. But if you're thinking of doing both French immersion or extended and AP, the best bet would be to take the mathematics in grade 9, 10 and even 11 because you're still on pace to get the AP that way as well and your French certificate. Thanks so much. All right, um, I think um, do we have any other questions, Diana? We do have some other questions. OK, let me I'll I'll, I'll go back to that document we were sharing. Um, someone asked about getting a tour of the school because of COVID. We haven't had any parents in the building at all. Um, but uh, and and we haven't really considered having our grade eights here. The elementary schools had uh, had big breakouts before Christmas of COVID, and we're super nervous about about coming around. Uh, hopefully, we'll do that tour in August when we have our orientation. Um, and somebody asked about the math that uh, Mr. Stephen just answered. Um, so. And I think that I, I answered that question with. Um, um, there's a question about how, how students get support with their IEP, and I think that that's either through uh, the locally developed programming or it could be a student in just a, a, a D stream class. Um, we, we get communications from the elementary schools about who has an IEP and there'll be IPRCs. So if you have an IEP, you, you know the term IPRC. There'll be IPRC meetings in the spring that uh, the high school, uh, our high school representatives will will attend. So we'll uh, we'll be in communication about uh, about that. So and if if you know if it gets late in the spring and you're you're still worried, um, reach out to us. It's early now uh, to be to be talking ab about IEPs, but later in the spring when we're considering what the timetable will look like for the fall. That's that's when we would uh, meet at an IPRC to do that. Um, group one, group two, group three, uh, they're just part of the um, graduation requirements for students. And like I said, in the in the booklet for um, uh, in our course calendar booklet that's available on our website, 
uh, there's a good explanation, a better explanation than I gave of uh, what each of those groups are. And I think, how do I get information on school buses? You should go to the website for Tribor Transportation. Uh, there's, uh, you can type in your address. Uh, it'll tell you what buses you should get on and, and that'll answer your question for you. Culinary courses. We have, um, we have a kitchen. We have a, a, a cooking course. Our courses are different than if you're looking at Bay Ridge. Bay Ridge has T codes. Their cooking courses are technology codes, so more more of the technical aspect of of culinary arts. Ours are social science courses, so we do health and nutrition, food and nutrition. Uh, the Grade Eleven one is, uh, uh, yeah, it's called food and nutrition. So there's some there's some desk work. There's some uh, education about how food. Um, is used around the world, how, um, how nutrition works. There's even some chemistry parts of uh, in the grade 12 course, but students do cook and, and prepare foods. We have in our in our culinary room, we have four different kitchen setups and uh, and so students do uh, culinary there. Our program begins in grade 10. There's not an option in grade. Uh, um, I think they might be doing a little bit of that in the in the new course that we have, the introduction to family studies. All right, and I think that's all of our questions for this evening. Um, feel free to reach out to, to one of us if uh, you didn't get an answer or didn't, uh, weren't able to type for some reason or had some other technical issue. Uh, uh, where's our slideshow here? Nope, that's not it. Q&A, and we did all of those. And there's our uh, how to keep in touch with us. We're on, we're on Twitter and Instagram. And uh, that's our, our website. And you can go to the LDSB website as well. If you're coming from out of area. Mr. Bonham Carter, you want to cover that? <laughs> if you're coming from out of area, you should you should uh, register for courses at your home school um, and uh, and then go to the board website and fill out the registration, the online registration there just to indicate that you want to come to Frontenac and that gives our principals an opportunity to talk about about that process. You'll go on a wait list um, and. Uh, but that's that's. The process, I think that's all for me tonight. Uh, thank you for your time and attention. OK, thanks, Mr. Lalonde. And um, so uh, I think you just heard my voice at the beginning of the presentation, so uh, I'm glad uh, we've, we've sorted out some of our technical difficulties. And a big thank you to Mr. Lalonde and uh, Ms. Ms. Jones and the rest of the staff who, uh, who have put this information session on for you this evening. Um, it sounds like a lot, right? It sounds like we've now talked for over an hour and you've been, you know, you're, you've, you've been, there's a lot of things that have been explained. And um, it's actually pretty simple. For the stage that you're at right now, uh, choosing the courses for grade nine is pretty simple. You have to make a couple of choices about um, about what your optional courses are going to be. Um, and uh, chances are your, your son or daughter has already done that uh, and moved my blue grid and done a great job. Um, I'm hoping the other message that you get this evening is that uh, we've got a, a great committed staff and they're here for you and they're going to make sure that this transition is a successful one. So if I can circle back on some of my main messages from earlier in the evening. Um, Frontenac really is a great school and um, I, I, it's my honor to be the principal and uh, you've got my commitment that uh, your son and daughter is coming to a good place next year and that we're going to do our, our best to make sure their experience is positive in and out of the classroom. And um, we're really looking forward to meeting them and uh, being part of their journey uh, for the four years that they are here at, uh, at Frontenac. And um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to any one of us at any time during the transition. And we're really looking forward to, to September and uh, meeting the graduating class of 2026. So thanks for, for coming this evening uh, and uh, uh, go Falcons. <laughs>